Welcome to the first critique for um, this 2022 season. And we are really happy to have Richard Laurent, a wonderful plein air painter, political cartoonist and illustrator. Richard teaches at Columbia College um, and was, were you an art director at Britannica? Yes, right? Yes, I was. Yes, he was for a long time. And um, I guess that is pretty good for now, huh? Yeah, so we'll uh, start. I'm, I'm, thank you so much, Lori. Appreciate it. I, I want to say a few words before we get going. First of all, I, yes. a shameless plug for my solo show at uh, Jackson Young Gallery, which is running right now through the second week in May. So that's on North Milwaukee. I think it's 1380 North Milwaukee. So it's a wonderful um, show. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you. Um, yep. I want to say a few words about what we're doing this year. First of all, there's always the discussion about, are we doing pure plein air or a mix? Is, is, it, is it unfettered plein air with no, no sneaking back into the studio and finishing or anything? Let's be real. Uh, some of the best work I've seen <laughs> in the last couple of years has been a combination. I watch people succeed and fail on a, on a grand scale. And, and this goes for everybody because uh, the weather has a lot to do with this for, for one thing. This is Chicago. Uh, I wanna, also wanna say something about, uh, besides the, the slow start we're all getting due to the weather, uh, some of the elements that we always are, have to deal with some of the visual elements, and I won't, I won't spend a lot of time here. But you know, the first thing on my list is always intention. You know, what's important in the scene? What are we looking for? And this is a very individual thing. Everyone has their own, their their own. Uh, they're driven by by a different demon, I guess. And it's and it's it comes down when you're in the field. I call it in being in the field. You, you have subject and object. You know, the subject is a tavern on, you know, Milwaukee and, and so on and so forth. But in reality, we're looking at objects and how light falls across those objects. Or sometimes doesn't fall if, if, if it's the kind of weather we've been experiencing. So there are two ways of looking at this. One is I'm going to paint the, the lakefront. Or I'm going to try to find an interesting uh, light and, and shade situation that would make a good painting. I'm, I'm kind of getting to that point in my own plein air painting where I'm looking for uh, something that will make a good painting. Uh, shameless, okay? Uh, light, you know, I often look for, uh, as I said before, the way light falls over, over an object cast shadows. Now we all paint at nine o'clock in the morning on Saturdays, right? Uh, for some of us, maybe that's the worst time to be painting. Our, because we have these beautiful long shadows later in the afternoon or, or early if, you know, I, I, I stopped getting up early after the military. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. But we do have this possibility of light and how it falls across objects. That, that's something to look for when you're out there looking for a good subject. And it may, may not be something picturesque or postcard-like. It may just be the corner of a building. Some of, some of the more intimate paintings uh, we see in our shows are the most interesting because they have this quality. The other thing is the, the geometry of drawing is very important. And uh, I'll mention the dirty word here, perspective. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a grasp on perspective and you're going to be painting structures, uh, I encourage all of you to, 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 to do a little homework and to practice your, your two-point perspective. Now, a lot of this, you know, there, there are two ways of approaching this. I've taught this at, at uh, Columbia in the past. One way is where you construct a two-point world. The other way is you're just on location and you're looking at something. So if you use that time-worn technique of just sort of measuring with your brush, 
finding the angles, that's a good start, okay? And the final thing is how do we improve? We'll be talking about that as we look at everybody's work. How do we get better? And what is getting better? So I, I'll, I'll throw that out and we'll move to our first painting, okay. which I believe is, is Anne. Did I get share? Wait, am I sharing yet? Yeah, you can share. Feel free to share. I, yeah, and then why am I not? Whoops, hang on. Oh, dang it. And uh, oh, yeah, everyone, wait, you, you can see it. Well, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, Anne's piece. Okay, can you which, see Anne's uh, piece, everybody? I'm, uh, yeah, this is yeah. Anne. And she she has a very interesting sort of atmospheric approach to what she's doing if i remember correctly there's there's a lot of design in in her uh, plein air work and i can tell that she's working on location she's not doing a lot of studio work which i guess is commendable uh there's an there's a watercolor aspect to this Anne, are you here tonight uh i don't think she is okay now we can really <laughs> now we can really dissect no uh the the truth of the matter is she's she's working in a in a tonal range and i'll mention this more many more times tonight her her value range is very limited be, and what that does is it it tends to soften the subject it makes it a little bit more atmospheric and uh so we're looking at at a tree and she's done a nice job of sort of delineating that too. Uh, the question for all of you is when you when you when you're out there about two hours and you have this on your easel, is this enough? Is this a good study? Do you take it home and, and work on it some more? I you know this is the rhetorical question for the evening. Let's take a look at the next piece. Okay. Okay, as soon as I figure out, is it this way? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, this Kuhn. Is Kuhn. Kuhn, very interesting, you know, uh, view from the back of this, this uh, sculptural piece in front of the palette and chisel. Uh, I guess, you know, wh when we look at what, by the way, the, the, the rendering of the, the uh, vehicles in the background, I loved. I just love that. I, you know, one of the things we have to, practice if we're planning uh painting in plein air in the city are vehicles and people and uh you know we've uh we've talked to earl about this and his advice is to practice painting these things outside of the subject okay now let's talk about the design of this a little bit the, the it uh the centering you know maybe the composition could be cropped a little bit differently. For example, if that right hand crop was brought over a little bit, this, the, uh, the center of interest wouldn't be dead center in the middle of the painting. Maybe that would make it more interesting. I don't know. Uh, whatever that little piece of object on the right side of the painting is, you really don't need. So I, I believe you could crop that you know come in an inch or an inch and a quarter on your painting and have an even stronger painting you've done it you've done some really nice work here uh the 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 the, uh, the way you rendered the uh the bush in front of the sculpture i don't know if that's necessary but i think it really adds another layer of interest to this piece was this an overcast day kun indeed yes thank you and the right side of object is actually clamped, not on the painting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's, it's a conceptual art, I guess. So the, another thing we're gonna be talking about tonight is we all have the issue of greens, right? And how do yeah. we deal with, with green? One right. thing that I'm starting to find that helps me is I'm mixing my greens on the palette after I've been painting for a while. And that, uh, what it does is it sort of, it adds in all the colors you've been working with. And it also helps to gray down the green a little bit. Uh, it, sometimes you don't want that effect, but that's, that's one 
uh, piece of advice I have. Uh, another thing here is, here's a question for everybody in general. When you're, when you're working with subject, do you paint the subject just as it is, or do you move things around? And I know there, there are uh, very good plein air painters from around the country who uh, have disagreements about this, but most of them, when you pin them down, will say, oh yeah, I moved this bush. I did this. I put a person in there. I did this. I did that. So you might want to think about that. I mean, I don't know if you're just pa painting strictly from what you see in front of you or not, but uh, that's something for you to think about when you're, when you're uh, composing uh, your next painting. I think this is a nice piece. Uh, my only question, you know, when I came away from this was, why did he choose to, to, to paint the back of the sculpture? And I, you know, only you can answer that. I don't have an answer to that, but uh, <laughs> I have, it, it reveals a new side of the, the sculpture for me. So <laughs> I guess I should thank you. Actually, I was inside of the gallery. Yes. I was gallery sitting for my exhibition. <laughs> okay. And nobody was coming. So I thought, Maybe while I'm staying inside of the gallery, I could look outside and get the, to the back of the sculpture. <laughs> ah, smart, a smart move indeed. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with our uh, current climate, you have to be inventive, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Nice Thank speech. you very much. Okay. Ah. We can move move on and we shall pass or move on. Okay, this is, uh, is this Linda? Linda Brown. Yes, yes I'm, okay. This is one of her idyllic, uh, you know, autumn uh, landscapes. A uh, couple, uh, couple things uh, I, I was thinking about here, you know, trying to, trying to define the key area in something like this. And again, her, her value uh, structure, the, the, the value spread is right in the middle values for most of the colors. And that's what makes this a very, very soft piece. Uh, I, I kind of have a hankering for uh, putting a little more emphasis on the center of interest, whatever you choose that to be. Right now, it's, it, it, it's apparently that bush is we're walking down the path. It's sort of the path, le uh, obviously, this is a great device we all know about, which is the S-shaped curve or the Z-shaped curve, which brings us via a river, a road, <laughs> a line of uh, railroad ties, whatever, into a, into a picture. And we, we, this gets us into the middle ground, which is where our center of interest is. Uh, if I gave you some advice, it would be, to maybe push that center of interest a little bit more in terms of, uh, I'm gonna say it here, thicker paint for that area of bright light in the, in the pathway, which you know, brings us right to that place. Now, now that may not be where you want us to go. And if that is the, is the case, then you have to think about that. Uh, but one of the reasons, this is oil I trust. Yes. Right? So one of the reasons we paint in oil is that we don't paint in watercolor. And I know that sounds kind of stupid, but we have the advantage of the properties that oil gives us. And one of them is you do have the advantage of thick paint and you can create some really strong highlights in certain areas. This is a lovely painting. It's very, very soft. And I'm sure it brings back good memories of where you were that day, you know, God, we need more uh, <laughs> moments like this when we're painting instead of the wind blowing at 50 miles an hour. But um, another thing I, I, I would bring to your attention, if you want to push something, you know, when we do a landscape, we're always dealing with foreground, middle ground, and background. In this case, the background could even be a little bit more atmospheric because we have that wonderful thing called atmospheric perspective where we can blue and add more bluer and grayer, you know, uh, 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 
tree line, for example, in the background, which would help to push the whole painting back. What you're doing is when you, when you work with a value spread that's very tight, you're also flattening the space. And uh, I, I, I won't get into your, in, your personal thoughts about the foreground, but in the, in the foreground, it, it, it almost could have a little bit more treatment, uh, some sort of shadow treatment or something, some way of dealing with that foreground. We all struggle with the foreground when we do a, when we do a, a landscape painting, unless we put something there. So mm -hmm. I, I, again, I feel like maybe, you, you, you know, if, if you were talking to a wildlife painter, they would paint every blade of grass and every leaf in the foreground. That's what they do. That is their modus. But in this instance, maybe just a couple little uh, trees, grasses or something or leaves scattered would help to sort of round out this painting and, and make it look finished, okay? Okay. So the bush is the focal point. It sounds like you're saying I should also put more thick paint on the path right there leading up to it in addition to well, the Well, it's so paint. nice in that area. You're, you've taken us to the middle, you know, middle ground and you have used thick paint and it really works. I mean, the bush is just glowing and it, that becomes the, it, you know, as, as, as has been said, the hero in your painting or the center of interest. So you can, you can augment that with just hitting that pathway a little bit stronger, just where it curves and it becomes, it becomes the whole centerpiece. Okay, you don't great. want to leave us hanging. Yeah, yeah, very nice piece, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go to the next piece. This is, uh, who are we? This is Barbara, right? Yes, I'm are just- you, a, Oh, you're I'm, there, Barbara, okay. I'm here, Colorism. I'm here. Okay, this, this, this reminds me of a painter that I know, I don't know if any of you know, a guy by the name of Roger Bull. He does cityscapes. He's been doing them for years. They sell like hotcakes. And because he has this wonderful use of color in his uh, city scenes, and this, this is really, uh, color is the key in this piece. And uh, it, it's got a lot of really good things going on. Uh, you know, the, the cad yellow, uh, there's a very famous painter who said, every painting he, he finishes, he puts a touch of yellow, red, and blue, no matter what it is. He's uh -huh. a, he's a well, well known uh, the southwestern painter, but he uh, and and this is what you've done here. You have yellow. You have. It, let me ask you what the blue is. It is it cobalt blue in the sign? No, it's a it's an ultramarine that I grade. Okay. Uh, little, yeah. You know, it, it, I sure. I liked your attention to detail in in sort of graying or bluing the color as it as you have. You know, as you have with portrait work, you have turning edges. So uh, basically, when we're out there, and you know, I've all, I've been with all of you, and we're we're just trying to control the tools and beat beat the the, the rain or something, and find uh, the forms and get the right color mix. So there's a lot of decisions to make in a short period of time. We we only have two or three hours. I've only had one painting that it just came together in an hour and a half. I was shocked. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was looking around for something to do for an hour. That never happens generally, but uh, you've captured the flavor of this neighborhood, I think. Um, I was wondering about some of the, some of the things, you know, you, you've given me this strong, uh, I'll call it a Naples yellow in the mid ground too, with the figure. Uh -huh. So, yeah. so that's where my eye goes. I'm, I'm going, following the buildings right down to that place. And to the, uh, where the figure is, you mean? Yeah, right? the figure. Yeah. Okay. All right. And this is something um, I often deal with, which is when you're doing a, when you're doing figures and you do them as silhouettes, uh, they immediately draw your attention, but mm -hmm. sometimes they also appear to be kind of ominous. Oh. That that may just be me. Maybe maybe my nightmares oh, are. These, 
dark shadowy figures coming for me or something. But well, I did that to just lay it in, thinking <laughs> I because I haven't touched it since this oh. day. I just is, and, and but I know what you mean. I wouldn't normally do that, but I just wanted to do that quickly. Yeah, this is this is a real good setup. If you're gonna do a little more work in the studio, this is really a nice mm -hmm. a nice uh, underpainting for your with a few little shifts in 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 things. And uh, I encourage all of you to, you know, if you're working with this, appears to be a a, a a one point perspective in a sense. So, mm -hmm. well, it is. It, and so okay. make sure that your vanishing point is, is clear when you, when you uh, start to, uh, you know, make a dot on your canvas if you need to. Okay. A lot of my students get lost. They're doing a one point perspective and they start to ad lib a little bit. There's a little ad libbing in that side, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the overhang, the, the yellow, awning okay. that goes goes back mm -hmm. i can just see that so uh just just look for that when you're when you're working and try to get that down that's part of the geometry okay. of drawing here but okay nice piece nice piece and uh uh i like the way one other thing i like what you're doing is you're not you're painting your shadows semi-transparent uh and again when we're out and it's it's a like a 40 degree day and there's a blue shadow being cast it may not look like it's transparent. It's not made from the same paint that you painted the local color, right? Like yeah. if, if I was going to find a, a, a shadow sh shadow color, I would start with that Naples yellow or whatever, and I would start to put some yeah. blue. Okay. Into something. Yeah. Just that something makes... to look out for. Yeah. Love, mm -hmm. love, I think we're going to see some more uh, other views of these dresses a little bit later too. Yes. I find that very intriguing. It's a nice, nice addition. So well, last, th last thing I'm going to say is, I, you know, all the details that everybody adds into their pieces, Lord knows, you know, details can make or break any painting. So uh, everyone watch the proportions on things that you put in as detail, whether it's, you know, tree branches or whatever. And, uh, your sky. I mean, I think you're, you know, we're going to be talking about everybody's skies in a few minutes too, because sky is very important. And uh, again, you might, you might be deciding to go back into the studio and finish your sky, like going to a lighter color of blue as you go toward the horizon. I, I, yeah. I don't influence you. You do whatever you want, but, but there are many, many ways of painting, <laughs> painting a sky. Skies are very important especially in this town. So uh, nice piece. I got a real feel of, of light and, and shadow from this. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Jill. Jill is not here. Jill is here. Jill she is here. is here. Hi, Jill. Hi, Richard. Did I get, I, yeah, I re, okay, Glessner House. I have not painted Glessner. I want to, but I've, I don't know. Am I afraid? Who knows? <laughs> be very afraid. <laughs> be very afraid. Uh, this is an interesting view design-wise, I think. And here's what happens. You know, the, 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 middle, the middle zone here is this bright wall. And this obviously becomes the main player until I see the person reading the book. This is all something we... We fantasize about a nice warm day. We're sitting in the in, in a in a shaded area, reading our favorite book. Life is good. There's no war in Ukraine. Things are going pretty well for us, right? Uh, but there's a lot of there's always a lot of detail in your paintings, and uh, maybe that has something to do with you have an illustration background, don't you? Yeah, that's what my uh, degree was in. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Kind of stuck that uh, way. <laughs> well, here, here, here's, I'm going to give you a, 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 something that I, I have often struggled with, and that is finding your center of interest or finding your main theme and then focusing on the contrast in that area and letting the rest kind of go a little bit. Like, this this is 
you know, in terms of perspective is, is right on pretty much, but it's very, very sharp. It's like looking through, you know, yeah. the digital camera lens. So uh, my suggestion to you is think about what your, what your intention is for this. I mean, you've, you've gone to a lot of work to, to render uh, the, the guy sitting on the bench. This isn't your husband, is it? <laughs> no, it's some random guy reading a book. Some random, <laughs> random. some homeless guy. <laughs> Which, you know, this is a whole narrative. This is a narrative painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one thing I would suggest, I think you're at liberty to maybe play with foliage, for example, to make that wall in the back less, you know, important maybe, because I go right to the wall when I, you know, visually I go right to the wall and then I say, why am I looking at the wall? <laughs> <laughs> Now, and if that, I grade it out, would that help? If I just put like a glaze of blue over it to send it back a little bit? Well, you might have some cast shadows. You might not, am I, am I telling you, you have to invent something here? Am I, am I going to get in trouble with the purists? Never. To have a cast shadow from the tree on the wall. Some, something that sort of connects with our readers, kind of a, a green, gray, blue, I, I'm sorry, a blue, green. Sometimes those yellows and blues together can be very, very uh, powerful. Like I cobalt together with uh, Naples yellow and it sometimes has really interesting results. And then it becomes the center of interest. Then as the viewer, I say, oh yeah, she's doing this riff on the wall. And maybe your reader is, is you know, some, a, a prop in the painting. Or maybe, you know, God forbid, it's not even necessary. This, this is what we all struggle with, right? I just finished a painting of three cows at, at the Wagner farm, right? Now it's two cows. <laughs> I, I almost finished the painting and I said, three cows is, you know, Logically, we all we all know the rule of threes as painters, right? But in this instance, it was not working. One of the cows was was out of position and would not move, and it was raining. And I said, "What if I just took the cow out?" I know it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt my ego to do that, but I'm gonna do that anyway. So, um, yeah, um, I. I guess that's everything I want to say about this. Any questions you have? Uh, no, thank you very much for that. I, one last thing. Okay, we're, the, the theme tonight is the subtext is green. Okay, greens. Mm -hmm. So the, your foliage is a little bit busy. Mm -hmm. that, that's another thing I just noticed here. It's, it's taking away from the center of interest, which is you know, there's detail and then there's this broad open space, which technically can work very well. But, you know, you might have the shadow uh, falling over this tree in the foreground on the right and have a lot less detail going on. You don't need it. Use a big brush. Just close your eyes and make some dabs. <laughs> that usually gets you away from getting, getting too precious with something. Okay. I throw away all my small brushes, really. <laughs> I try. I try. Anyway, thanks so much, Jill. It's good to, good to talk to you again. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This is Yesenia, right? This is Yelena. Yelena. I'm sorry. Yelena. And I don't think she's here. Yelena, are you here tonight? I don't think so. Thank goodness I got her name wrong. <laughs> well, all I was going to say about this was this really gives you a feeling of winter in Chicago. And she's, she, she has this strong contrasty way of painting, which is very expressionistic. It's, she's not, she's not doing realism here. This is another realm. 
right? We, I think we've talked about this with her before. I haven't, but other critiquers have. And the yellow and the blue, the only thing I would suggest to her to try would be maybe putting a little bit of more uh, phthalo blue in the cast shadows from the trees, like she did in the background. It's like the ones in the foreground are very delicate, but very contrasty and sharp. The ones in the background are this blue color, but they're, they're uh, perspective-wise out of perspective with the ones in the foreground. If she could just reverse all of that, that would really help this. She's she's got a good painting going. It's it's but it it is in the realm of expressionistic work. Like her cars too. All right, let's go on to the next one. Hang on, there we go. I don't know if you guys are learning this anything from from well this this uh this is Muriel. Muriel's here. Muriel's yes, I'm here. here. Oh, I'm so glad. Richard. This is such a, yeah, this was, okay, I, this is one of my favorite paintings tonight. And why is that? Why is that, everybody? Well, first of all, there's such a strong perspective lead in to the center of interest, which is the Tower Bridge, it's Canal Bridge. You've inspired me so much, I think I'm going to go over there and try to paint this thing. And what she's done is very clever. She's, she brings us into the, the bridge tower and then we, we kind of go down the crane to the cad yellow and we, my eye goes on down to the boat and it sort of creates this ellipse that keeps taking me around and around in the painting. It's a very strong composition. And again, she's using this wonderful combination of blue and yellow cadmium and I don't know what blue you're using, but it's there's a there's a little boat, you know, next to the tower too, and she's not she's not toying with us when it comes to painting the sky. She's letting that just be sky. As someone said to me once in a, in a critique, I was going in. A, oh, these are all the reasons. This is the metaphor in the landscape, and this this guy was a lawyer, so he said, you know, sometimes Richard. A bush is just a bush. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. But uh, this is this is sometimes this is you know Chicago is Chicago, and it captures that feeling of atmosphere, temperature. Uh, obviously, it's Chicago because of you know the landmarks in the background. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of in love with this painting. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> just really good light and you, you you know one of the key factors is how you handle the shadow cast by by the bridge structure and she's done a really nice job of aerial perspective going back in space so yeah thank you muriel for sharing this thank you so much richard yes thank you We shall, we shall move on. <laughs> Interesting piece here, okay. This is, uh, is this Karen? This is Liz Gear. Liz, let me, oh, Liz, yes, of course. Yeah, hi. USC Church, hi. Yeah, uh, this, th this was a real perspective challenge and you, you really did an admirable, admirable job of, of getting this down. Uh, there isn't too much going on in the foreground, which is the time of year, I guess. But here's what happens for me. And, and I, I feel badly because it's, there's so much attention to detail in the leaded windows, for example. <laughs> Beautifully done. Beautifully done. So uh, I come down the pathway. My eye comes down the pathway. It goes into the Gothic door, it goes up the side and right out the painting. So in terms of composition, uh, this, this is a, a, a challenge for you, the painter, or you, the artist, to try to find a way of sort of slowing us down. You, you've, you know, you've done a very analytical capture of this. And there's undoubtedly a lot of work in this too. 
maybe maybe when these uh, when the blooms come in or something, you can go back and maybe you know put some shrubbery in or something to just <laughs> soften the the architecture. But and uh, it it is a nice painting. It, you just don't want us to come and go so quickly. Yeah. Because there are, are definitely uh, uh, identifiers, you know, arrows that point the way to the sky and beyond. And mm -hmm. uh, so, and you're you're not you're not telling us, oh, look at the sky. <laughs> so you, that's something you want to think about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay. Who have we? This is this is Karen, and Karen is here, I think. Karen Carico. Yeah, my my notes are a little bit out of out of order, but yeah, this is an acrylic five by seven linen, right, North Carolina, and I I call this, uh, you know, this is this is an etude. This is a study, and and it's obviously uh, plein air. Uh, and I think what we're looking for here in maybe if you take this to, to another painting, a larger finished painting from this study, you're looking for what your center of interest is gonna be. Now, one thing you did, which I really like, you've captured the, the feeling of you know the blossoms. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's in the background, but it's very solid. It's painted. You know, it feels good in paint. I don't know if it's a rock or a haystack or can you can you share with us? She's having microphone problems and I can't seem to unmute okay. her and Zoom isn't detecting her microphone. So she can put things in the chat. It's a haystack. <laughs> ah, well, I guessed that the first time I saw it. So I was I was a little reluctant to say that but it has such nice volume to it it's just really well painted and the bush in the foreground has really interesting uh you know it has good light and shadow too it really works i think you have to decide what is this painting about now sometimes plein air painters will cheat this cheat the system a little bit okay and here's a hint you might put something that's a very strong color right to the right somewhere in that dark green area from your haystack or you might you might add a lighter uh tone to the haystack you know to to, to render it even more uh, strongly like again i guess naples yellow is the color of the evening like that right top side of the haystack you know add some thicker color there is my yeah. cursor is that helpful <laughs> yeah that helps and th and that would add you know that would pull us right into the haystack beautifully painted so i think uh you know for a five by seven piece this is very nicely done you you might think about some other little things which plenary painters are always ruminating about you know air holes in the in the in the forest in the background uh there are actually artists who believe that uh, you need to leave a window or a door or an opening in a painting to make it a really successful painting for the viewer. I don't know if I agree with that, but sometimes if you put a little air hole through the trees or something, uh, this helps the viewer to sort of walk themselves through a painting. I used to do paintings that were, uh, I had, chairs as metaphors basically these were large paintings these were, these were 36 inch squares and one at one opening this woman came up to me and she said i really like this i really want to be there could you turn your chair around in the future and don't have any people in the painting and i'm thinking she she's giving me way too much information <laughs> i don't need that but but uh that's how some people get into these things so was this a was this a, a a good moment for you in North Carolina? We'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Maybe Karen's she might be typing. 
It was a beautiful day. I feel like a translator. It was a beautiful day. In the neighborhood, right? And this is North Carolina. I almost wish I was there with a. Yes. Easy chair and a glass of wine. (laughs) My sketchbook, right? You, you, you did a nice job with your brush strokes. So, you know, I, w- I, would, I would take this to, a, to the next level. I would go to a 16 by 20 canvas and I would uh, do this as a, as a finished painting. If you do something like you put a, let's say, let's say you put an Adirondack chair in the, sh- in the shadow in the front or something, then immediately you're connecting with your audience. There are certain things that just, suck people right into your paintings. And if you're doing a larger painting, maybe maybe it calls for something like that, but maybe not. I mean, once again, we're talking about foreground, middle ground and background. What do you do with the foreground? Anyway, one last, last little, oh boy, I'm really, I'm really getting into it tonight. You take your middle ground shadow and you might pull it out of the left side of the painting, just that, background stroke instead of cutting it off even though that's actually how it looked you want to create these strong design elements horizontals verticals so on i think your tree is in you know exactly the right place it's right on that you know the rule of thirds we're always talking about so that always that always helps in terms of a a strong design so thank you thanks very much Oh, you, Mark. Are you there, Hello. Mark? I am. Okay. I'm I'm having a love affair with your painting. Is that possible? <laughs> is that allowable? It- so there really isn't very much I can say except, damn. Uh, you know, I saw the photograph and you know what I like about this? There, there are not, you know, the verticals and the horizontals, they're not drawn with a straight edge, which I would have the tendency to do. And it it would probably destroy the, the, the uh, charm of this piece. And you've, you've taken a lot of time to work on the, you know, the, the shop sign and it really works the shadows. You've added a little floral thing right there in the front, the little touch of red. Uh, It's just a lovely piece. Put this in your next show. Thank That's you. all I have to say. Thank you, sir. <laughs> like everything you did. There, we go. there it is. See? There it is. Now, there's an art to simplifying things. It, it, we're going to find this out when we look at this painting because there's a lot of detail in this. Is this Priscilla? It's Priscilla. Should I go yeah, or wait until you get to the larger painting? Or do you want to critique this one? Because she has a larger a version. I mean, a larger photograph. Well, if you can go to the larger one. Okay, I think it's further on though. So. We'll oh, just... oh, yeah. I'll I'll be glad to do this one. Well, uh, whatever you want. Well, I mean, uh, this one, between... um, the sky has cut off a little bit, so uh, okay, the we'll other go to the one larger one. A full... we'll the, okay, yeah. we'll we'll come back to Priscilla. Priscilla, oh, there are you there? Sorry. There you are. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> are you, are you here going? To... <laughs> are you going to steamboat? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. No, check. but uh, yeah, I, I do think that uh, a little bit too busy. <laughs> no, I, you know, honestly, I always admire someone who takes the whole challenge, you know, from soup to nuts and says, I'm going to do the <laughs> whole thing and I'm going to make it work. <laughs> so sometimes so. I don't realize that till later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the same boat. I, I, I work very hard on simplifying my, my subjects and trying to keep them interesting at the same time. So the question for Priscilla or anyone is how to order all the elements. And she's done a very smart thing here. She's used these beautiful colors. She, she took that white container in the bottom left and she made it pink, which I thought was, you know, I've only done one pink, pink painting in my entire life. So that's like, uh, landing on Mars for me. So this, I, I thought that was very innovative to do that because then she goes to this beautiful teal color and then she moves us into the, really what is probably the center of interest, which is the blue hull. And I thought, you know, very, very clever, very clever, very thoughtful. Uh, 
Now, what do you do? You do you edit here? For a minute, we're going to take a look at aerial perspective because that's always an issue when when you're putting all of these elements together. A few a few of the elements look like they're a little bit out of par with what's going on in terms of the uh, perspective. But you know what? I'm not sure that bothers me. Your brushwork, uh, especially on the boats in the river, they really capture what's what what they are. They're a little bit uh how do i say this they're a little bit uh of a caricature of a boat uh but that that doesn't bother me i think they're just really nicely painted and uh you haven't overworked the water you know we all we all struggle with water and trying to make that work for us and you you know you can we can all paint water till the cows come in and sometimes we'll get to a place where it, it's working and then we do a couple strokes and we've destroyed it. We, I think you've, you, you haven't overworked that, which is good. Uh, let's see. Secondary colors we talked about. Uh, uh, the sky. Let's go to the sky here. You know, this, the sky is sort of like, you know, a, 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 a sub player in this, in this painting. And we have the outline of the city, which is gray. And I was kind of thinking you know maybe if you applied that aerial perspective you know construct of maybe bluer and you know grayer but maybe a little blue in in the skyline going back it would it would make it a little a little livelier you know there's a lot of stuff going on back there too a lot of vertical lines and white lines and scratching and uh, i'm intrigued i'm i'm intrigued uh uh, and then you have this large structure on the right side, which is sort of imposing, and it it almost goes against all these other things in terms of color. But that's something for you to think about. I mean, one last thing I'm going to say about aerial perspective. I think your horizon line is a little too high for those buildings going back in space. I think in your photograph, they were a little bit lower along the horizon which gives the feeling of there being farther away see what i'm talking about no big deal right no, nothing terrible it's just what you've done is you brought the skyline forward by by raising it uh the the sky itself you know there's a <laughs> This this is our this is our big conundrum as as painters in Chicago, you know this the sky is like blue okay, blue blue or blue or it's it's just flat gray. There's no never seems to be any in between except I learned a, I learned something that if you run out to the lake right after a big rainstorm you see all the wonderful clouds that were coming over and 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 that forms this amazing sky which is probably a subject in itself so priscilla what do you think about this are you happy with with what you did yeah i'm kind of um i feel uh it's probably could be simplified more uh, as i'm going into it sorry um as I'm going into it, I found out later, oh, it's too complicated. It, it should be simplified furthermore. Uh, it it looks too busy to me right now. And uh, well, when you say the horizon line, I'm confused a little bit. Yeah, let me um, talk about the hmm. horizon line is actually where the virtual horizon would be if you were standing there looking. Well, maybe I should have said, the skyline itself is a little bit high. And what that does is it brings all the mm -hmm. buildings forward in your in your painting. Maybe a little simplification would be the order mm -hmm. of the day for the skyline. You don't have to paint mm -hmm. every building. The most important building is what? <laughs> I'm gonna make you answer this. Most important building is yeah. which does anybody know? Yeah, Sears, I can. Sears Tower. Yes, <laughs> I mean not yeah. Sears Tower. Um, yeah, which building is this, by the way? 
is it Sears or? or uh... Yeah, it is the one on the left. Yeah, is... well, you know, in, in terms of anyone who's going to buy a, a Chicago <laughs> urbanscape, that's a very important part of it. And you've moved it in, that's good. Uh, maybe if you moved it in closer to that one third line, it would be even stronger. These are these are very minor things. And as mm -hmm. I mentioned before, if you made your skyline a little bluer, if you look at your photograph, there's actually a blue cast to those buildings that are going way back. And that would help to push mm -hmm. everything back a little bit. Nice job though. I think, you know, I'm I'm in I'm in love with a lot of things tonight. I'm in love with your boats. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Oh, Robin. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Well, hey, Richard. <laughs> I'm trying to find my notes here on you. What do I do with Robin? You know, this almost looks like a watercolor painting. Well, it was strange because when I was doing it, um, I was putting in all the thick kind of thick, trying to do thick waves and texture. And when I photographed it, it came out kind of dirty and marred. So I kind of, I kind of brushed it out and voila. <laughs> well, you, but I'm not, do, I'm not, I'm not you, happy with it. You have a spectacular sky. The sky is just beautifully done. I, I know you were complaining about it, but uh, that's, that's just so powerful. I don't, I think the rest is kind of unfinished, quite honestly. It's like, you've just gotten started, you needed more time. And uh, I, yeah. I don't know what the actual photograph was, but you know, again, you want to think about how you're leading us into that and where the, right now the center of interest is that little boat floating out there, kind of bobbing up and down. And uh, I, I came back later and saw the other boat here and I said, well, this perspective wise is not not working yet. So, uh, and then what do you do? This is uh, what, is this Montrose Harbor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. kind how of. do you, you know, this is always a question, how do you paint a harbor? You know, this is, this is one of the big challenges we all have. How do you take that big subject and reduce it to, oh, it's about this. Maybe it's just about, you know, the, the pier. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's your decision. Also going back in, in space, uh, once again, your aerial perspective on the trees, as they become bluer and grayer, you can push that. Go You've done that on the left side. There's this sort of, you know, far, something in the far distance. I don't even know what it is, but uh, things don't always have to this also speaks to edges too. Things don't always have to be sharp. So uh, I guess I'd have to be out there with you to say, well, how, how is the, you know, the reflection cast from that boat back there? What's happening with this boat right here? It's sort of, sort of in shadow. You, I don't, I don't know. So um, you want to, you want to think about those things when you go out and say, what is what is my subject for today and how can i make it really strong from the get-go it i've found from my own experience if i say i'm going to try to find the essence of this subject once i start painting i'm already too far gone by the time i work 10 or 15 minutes if i don't see something you know i know uh this has been said you know before too, which is, you know, in the first 20, 25 minutes, you should see pretty much where you're going with your piece. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I take your point that, you know, either you're gonna paint, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna paint Montrose Harbor or I'm gonna find an interesting aspect to the painting. And so I think I tried to do too much. I think I thought my composition was okay and then I don't really think it is now, but, um, Let's call it unfinished, and I'll try to. Fix <laughs> well, I love I love your sky. Don't don't touch that sky. It's okay. really great. 
it's a stormy sky. It's very hard to paint. You know, you, you nail that. So, yeah. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, this is Kim Abadi. Oh, Kim. Oh, hi, Kim. I think Kim is here. Kim, are you here? This is nine by 12. Minakwa. Okay. Uh, no, Kim's not here. I thought she was, but she's Oh, not. she is. Okay. I'm just going to say a couple quick things. Uh, the landmass, the peninsula comes dangerously close to s slicing the painting right in two. And she's tried tried to offset that with this vertical element, whatever that happens to be. Maybe it's a a tree trunk or something. It's it doesn't quite succeed. So what happens is we have two paintings. First thing I would do is trim the bottom third of this painting right off. <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, so the peninsula would fall on that one third mark, basically. Her her sky is lovely. It's it's really hard to integrate pinks and blues and yellows all together. I know, I've tried. And usually I opt for one or the other. But in this case, she's she's done a pretty good job of doing that. So that's my that's my comment about this. No, oh, this is me. This is you, Lori. I always recognize your work. No. Because it has so much power. That's the first thing I wrote here was there's always a strong contrast and intense color, which is, is good for any kind of urban painter, I think. Uh, now, when you photograph this, was everything horizontal? Um, I, when I, so when I painted it, I mean, was the painting horizontal? That's yeah, what I meant. Yeah, painting's horizontal. Um, oh, but you know what? It looks a little cockeyed, doesn't it? Well, I'm, think when, it... I'm, when I'm when uh, I'm yeah framing my my own shots, often the camera distorts. You know, it's a wide angle lens on these little cameras, and weird things happen. So we're gonna we're gonna make the assumption that everything's level here. Okay. Yeah, I think that and... was me. I think I I when I was painting it, I didn't. I went crooked when I was painting it, not the photo, me, <laughs> when I was standing there. Well, I, went, you know, I didn't, I brought the sidewalk like a little down. I definitely have perspective issues, but anyway. That's easy. Well, actually your perspective issues are, are pretty minor because you're kind of, you're, you're, uh, your one point is down low, you know, off of the building, almost horizontal. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, view i mean it, it has some gravitas uh what time of day was this was this morning yeah 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 you've captured that really well oh thanks i mean there's so so many nice things going on in your paintings the the, the, the uh the detail of the windows beautifully done those four windows up there oh, and thanks. again i'm i'm looking at paintings that are not done with a straight edge trying to you know, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, poetry in these things as a result. So I have no problem with any of that. Uh, in fact, I don't have a problem with your painting either. I think, I think uh, as a, an observer, a viewer, I'd love to see more of the dresses in terms of brushstroke. But that's, I'm sure they were kind of in shadow. That's, that's just me. Um, no, it would have been fun to paint the pretty dresses more. <laughs> I think as a girl, I really would like to paint as, the as pretty a, dresses. Well, as a boy, I would, I would also <laughs> like to paint those dresses. <laughs> so uh, your, your, your tritones, your neutrals are interesting. I would, I would think about lightening up your shadows a little bit in general, especially your cast shadows. Here. Just, just. Next time you go out to paint, just say, I'm gonna put more, I'm gonna put more blue into this. Because I know this is probably winter and the shadows are much darker, but you you have so many nice things going with color. You know, again, you have the yellow, the red, and the blue, which 
makes this subject sing, I think. It's like shadows here, like to the right. I should like yeah, the cast shadows are coming off to the right, I guess. See, there's a shadow. See, as I look more closely now, I'm beginning to delineate the bottom of the building. And it, and it, it doesn't bother me that much that it's not well defined what the what the bottom is, but there might be a strong light coming in from the left because it kind of kind of peters out as it goes toward the the, the side of the canvas. And I kind of want to my brain wants to say there's a strong morning light over to the left, and it's casting this powerful light. But but then I look at the, the the light area on the sidewalk and it's not it's not light there it's not as strong as it probably could be uh, yeah go ahead sorry so i have no problem with you pushing your contrast you know you you are a contrasty painter you have very strong darks and lights which i think is a is a strength for you you know you painted your sky very very strong and i think that is that is the statement you make when you go in to do an urban scape. And it has a lot of charm as a result. But again, you're right. Just watch, you know, the awning going back uh, perspective wise on the right side. It's a little bit off. Mm -hmm. If you can just pay attention to those things, maybe where it's reflected from the sky on the top of the awning in the shadow side, maybe a little bluer. You know, okay. be a little bolder with your reflected light. What do you have to lose? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I have a question. Does this bother you that I, I didn't know? I actually didn't have this in the photograph. I, you know, I painted this standing there, and then when I took the photograph, I forgot this part. So, does this unfinished bit on the left bother you at all, or? No. <laughs> okay. No, <I'm> <laughs> We're done. <laughs> in a word, no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. You're a painter, you know, you're, you're, I, I keep telling myself, this is the, the conversation. I'm not an architectural renderer, I'm a painter. So what do I do? How do I make this sort of work? Uh, okay, we'll use the word poetically or rhythmically. That's what we're really shooting for. This is what we all want is how do we get the light and the shadows to, to, to make this rhythmic statement about life? Otherwise, we're just recording, you know, oh, this is a this is a rendition of a photograph, that, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we don't want that. We want we don't want photographic reality. We want atmosphere. And, uh, you know, again, the right side, I'm looking at the second floor, too. You're you're going into deep shadow and it's kind of a gray going almost into black. It's almost like a black wash. And maybe if you had some reflected light coming back from the street, just a kind of a sheen of some kind. I don't know if it's there or not. Maybe it's maybe it wasn't there at all. But you know, play with those things. Play with those things. An, another little thing. You know, this is another little trick that a lot of painters use. Like you've got all of this nice color going on right here. And then you go to the left awning, and it's kind of kind of un, un uh, yeah. you know defined if you had like a red line at the bottom of the awning just going out of the painting that picks up you know now you have three reds you have the the name you oh, like the on this side on this yeah. side just ah. the at the bottom of you know or somewhere there are things that you could do to sort of make this more i guess i hate to use the word romantic but a lot of a lot of collectors, people who collect plein air look for, I think, this is just my opinion, they look for the romance in these scenes. Usually it comes down to, oh yeah, we were married in that pub. I'll buy it. <laughs> so anyway, a nice painting, very nice painting. Thank you. Thanks very okay. much. Yeah. Now this is a watercolor and uh this is Deb, right? Yeah, I don't know. Is Deb, are you here? No. She dropped it and ran. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not a watercolorist, so I'm not going to say very much about this, except that uh, there are, you know, when you're 
when you're dealing with something in a what I call a documentary fashion, which is what like documentary photographs, you're you're going straight on. That way you don't have to deal with the perspective, right? You're just dealing with light and shadow. And most watercolor painters have this wonderful sense of light and shadow. I think she could uh, look for those middle values when she does a, a watercolor painting and maybe add in some some darker darks later when she gets home or something. So she she's committed so much, you know, it's such it's a strong piece, but there's some things, some little design things that need to be worked on. And then the sky, you know, watercolors, this is one of the things they're supposed to do beautifully. And that is to, you know, wet the paper and let the sky develop. And that's that's one of the the uh, things you just have to learn to do. So if she was here, that's what I would tell her. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I hadn't seen this before. Now, who is, who is this? I don't know who this is. Someone is may this? have sent this in late, but it's interesting. But let's I see have if I can idea, but I It's mine, sure. Kathleen Flaherty. Oh, Kathleen, hi. I, I hi. didn't see this before. This is... Yes, I, I put it up today. I'm so sorry. No, that's um, quite all right. Tell us a little I, bit about uh, this. Well, if it gets shown, it gets shown. If it doesn't, I'll just enjoy the critique. Let's talk about that. Let, tell us a little bit about it. Is it on panel? Is it oil? It is, it is on a panel. It's oil. Uh, I was in West Bend along the walkway. They have a river walk. Um, that's three miles long and it was just a gorgeous day. Kayakers were out in the middle and the water was low. So it, it had a lot of mud along it, but I just still feel it's not finished because I, I feel like there should be more reflection of the branch and something just doesn't seem right. And I thought, well, I'll let you tell me what you think. It's a 12 by 16 painted plein air. So. Okay, here, for, first of all, I think my advice to you would be to, to do another version of this and don't touch this. I think there are so many nice, good things going on here. I mean, they're really, really good things that make this a very interesting and successful piece. One thing is your background. I, I don't know whether that's stone boulders and uh, brush in the background. It doesn't matter really. Uh, there's an interesting textural quality to your brushwork, which uh, I find exciting actually. So maybe if you had a little bit of uh, something, you know, you might, you see all that water area in the front to the mm -hmm. right. If you just hit that with a little brighter, you know, Maybe, maybe titanium white with a little bit of blue in it, tiny little bit of blue. Just hit it really hard with your flat brush, with your chisel brush. That's all okay. I do. So you mean in the bluer, the deeper blue spots? No, bring in no. More? I, there's just one little uh, strip of, of uh, water that's down toward the bottom right. Yeah, if you could go over and a little bit higher, <laughs> this is like a, now a little lower, a little lower to the left, up, now to the right, just a little bit. See the blue stripe where the water would be up, up above that. Okay. Right. Up a little higher, Lori. <laughs> right there, that little tiny strip. Oh, it's that, like a brown. Well, just above that, there's just a little, you made okay. a brush stroke right there. You could go in and do a really strong hit and you could define what this rock is a little bit more, which okay. I'm, I'm going to call it a rock, okay, for lack of something better. It's very subtle. If, if you had a little bit of water coming around that rock, just okay. to bring some of the detail that you have in the back, in the middle ground up front. Not a lot. I, okay. I, you know, you're, you're working. Every, everything is pretty much working here. Your darkest dark is where the center of interest is in your painting. 
and it's it's really nicely done. There's a little bit of a there's a little uh, angled cast shadow, I think, from something. Uh, you were painting from life, so you probably were trying to get this done, and you put these in it. This, uh, are you primarily an oil painter? I started out for years watercolor. I knew it. I knew it. I knew. It. <laughs> I know. I can no. tell. I can spot watercolorists who turned to oil yeah. also. Yeah, you have a really nice technique. Congratulations, well, you. you're you you've joined the oil painters. So. Thank you. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, uh, there's just a nice set, sense of subtlety to this whole piece. Yeah, I've been doing oil since, oh, I'd say tw 2003. Yeah. Because I saw how oil painters could just enter the events, the plein air events, and, and just take a wet painting and frame it. And I would be struggling with with my glass and mats. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna learn how to do oil painting. Well, you, well, you're doing something here that I find very appealing. And that is, there is an abstract quality to this painting. And I think you wanna hold on to that. You know, that's something a lot of people work toward. It takes them years to get there. So you've already put in your, your time as a watercolorist. So this shows a lot of, experience in, in that kind of technique. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And just remember yeah. you have this you have this ability now as an oil painter to put some very thick paint in, in limited areas where you want to bring the viewer's eye. So, yeah, I saw I, that lighter curve uh from the river bank back here. Yeah. There's this lighter curve on the left. Yeah. Uh, I wish I wish I could have a pointer or something to show you what I mean. Yeah. But this lighter white uh, light tan curve right there. Yeah. yeah, right there. And and I thought, well, continue that curve around and maybe put in some stones. I just knew something seemed to be missing. So um, you're saying to put this darker area down here turn that kind of into a stone rock well, it, yeah if you wanted to to emphasize that just a little bit you could make that part of you know the foreground sure. for everybody is always the issue but you you have such a nice sense of design going on here if you didn't touch this it would be fine with me okay i, I would well, i would thank use you so much yeah thank yeah you. welcome to the group hopefully yeah yes i um i see i'm 77 so i think hey. well i'm not driving into chicago that much by myself so i'm from cedarburg so oh you are i yeah. am yes we may, our we may see is, you all right maybe i'll see you at our event it's coming up on yeah. the 4th of june the 4th of june yep. okay thank you so much yeah, thank you. You're going to be inundated by us, Kathleen. I'm so <laughs> thrilled. We had fun with Sue Whitney and all of you folks. Great to meet you. Thank you. Oh, another piece I didn't see before. Okay, who is this? Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Dorothy Mason. Yeah, hi. How are hi. you? Good. Uh well, let's look at this for a moment. What tell tell me what your your intention was on this? Well, I wanted to um, create the sky and the water to be very harmonious, but um, the foreground has this kind of um, natural garden. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I was just trying to create the scene that I saw. There are a lot of really good elements going on here. There, the diagonals are interesting in terms of landscape in general. Your, your, the way your water connects, you know, and along the horizon. That's that's often very hard for people to do. They they think they have that nailed. Oh, it's just a just a line, and there's the water. But you've done a I was just up in Maine last summer and, and this is what was happening. 
It was very hard to get. Uh, the the landmass on the right is a little bit silhouette like. It's it's really painted, you know, as a solid. There's no one thing that would help to sort of soften that would be your your brush work on something that's going back toward the horizon. If it was a little softer and maybe a little lighter. Okay. That way it doesn't command, you know, it's the what is what is this? The sea creature, the monster, you know. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's that element that comes in from right field and takes all of our focus away from the foreground. Okay. Now I know this uh, I think you probably are those little birds or something on top of the Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's that? <laughs> What size is this? It's a uh, um, nine tall by twelve wide. Okay, so it's fairly small. So you have a lot going on in, in a painting like this. And what I would recommend for you is that you you start to think in terms of you know, as, uh, you know as as uh, Steve often says, the hero in your painting, which is the center of interest, the focal point, the main attraction. I, apparently it's this sort of, it's not a pier, it's just a bar going out it's into the water. It's a breakwater, it's a breakwater. It's a breakwater, thank you. Couldn't think of the word, breakwater. Yeah. And uh, you've got all of this interesting detail going on in the foreground. So kind of brings my my eye away from what's going on in that that other area. Mm. And I'm And I'm looking in, you did a nice job of painting all the detail, but I don't think you need to do both or all. Okay. I think you have to pick your pick your battles, so to speak. And then uh, scale wise, there's I, I'm not real familiar. I, I'm feeling a little uneasy about scale, and I can see the path, and then the breakwater. I don't know. I, I'm guessing maybe it's a foot high. Oh no no! Of... You can you can run on that big breakwater. Okay, it looks smaller than than it is. In other words, because well, your path. The path, your it's, path. It, it's not really a path. It's like an opening. Okay, but my my uh, little brain Perception. is reading it yeah. as a path. Right. See, this is this is what we all deal with when we're when we're putting a painting together. We have to uh, find a way of convincing our audience of all of these details. So we we can't be standing next to our painting saying, well, this is a two lane highway and, and this right. happens and you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So anyway, I think you did a very, very nice job with the water effect overall. And that's that's really, that's actually the subject of this painting in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's not the island on the left, on the right. Mm -mm. I could minimize the island. I could brush something over that to make it softer. Well, I would, I would, yeah, I, I would uh, oil in and I would go in with uh, a, some sort of gray blue tonal range, maybe a little bit of green in it. I don't know. Yeah. And just, just pull that down. There's something that happens right on the edge of uh, land, land's end too. I've spent a lot of time trying to paint that where you have an effect where the, the light apparently is up in the sky above that. Mm -hmm. So there, there would be a little more going on if you wanted to get into detail there. So, so it wouldn't be just a silhouette. That would help to, to bring that together. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, next time you're out, uh, I would try picking something with more detail, you know, a more intimate view of something, whatever you choose. It's really hard to paint the panoramas. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, as I said before, I've just finished doing a series of paintings of the, the rocky coast of Maine. So I had the same issues. Is it, is it about the rocks? Is it about the spray? Is it about the little boat out on the... But you've done a beautiful job with, with uh, the water. Thank you. Nice job. Any other questions? No, that's fine. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That was very helpful. The end. The end.
or is it the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Only time will tell. <laughs> like the end of a sci-fi movie there. <laughs> Thank you so much. For oh, sorry. Go ahead. You're more than welcome. So tomorrow morning, I go into my illustration class, and there will be sea monsters and unicorns and fairies to 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 talk about. So uh, <laughs> quite a jump in subject matter. So thank Mark you, Lori. Mark looks like Banksy sitting there. Mark Cleveland looks like Banksy sitting there. Oh. <laughs> hey, can I just make a public service announcement, Laura? Yep. Uh, so for the, I know I called the show at the Admiral, the small works, but that was only to try and incent people to do something a little smaller because they only have this one wall and we're trying to get as many artists as we can on it, but do whatever you want, put something in there. We've only got 10 people participating right now. I'd love to see 25 artists with a, with a, a single piece. So I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to, Enter whatever you want. We waive the size thing. We'll work it out. All right. Great. Thank, thank you, Mark. You want to um, remind us how to uh, get into the show, then, Mark? Yeah. The uh, I gotta do that again. Um, if you go out, the, the, we've sent a bunch. We put a bunch of stuff on Facebook. It's in the newsletter. Um, also, the links are on online jury shows, and you just click on that, and you can enter. Um, and then we asked people to put two paintings in. Um, and I think we're, we're going to see how many we get. You know, if we're in the neighborhood of 30, we might have everybody just bring everything and let Jan Petri decide what looks good on the wall. Um, but we're right now, I would put, you know, a couple paintings in that, you know, you want to do. We have one painting in the, or paint out in the area this weekend, uh, down by Montrose, they're actually at the other end of that whole park, um, closer to Foster, but um, that whole area is so beautiful. You could just paint there for the entire summer. So um, I'm hoping to see you all on Saturday with uh, and Lori enjoying her first day as a full-time professional artist, right? Yes. Does it have to be <laughs> That's it for me. Mark, uh, how long is that show gonna be up? Uh, I want to say till July 5th. Oh, okay. Starts on May 13th, which is an odd date. And so the other thing I'm glad you asked, there's, have your stuff framed. There's not a lot of, once, I'm trying to give people as much time to paint as you can. So we're going to let you know on the 7th, and then you can drop your stuff off like the next few days because the show goes up on the 13th where normally you get a couple of weeks to decide what to frame and all. If you've got a couple of pieces you're confident in, I, I'm not really, um, we're, we're not doing a real strong jury on this one. We're just trying to get as much work as we can on the wall. So mm -hmm. um, feel comfortable framing your stuff and, and uh, get it into online jury shows so we can see what we have to work with, all right? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Richard, so much for another, for a wonderful critique. Your insight's always great. Thank you. Thanks. Insight's Thanks always so everybody. insightful. <laughs> I, th I th sit around all the time thinking about these things. So, uh, yeah, I want to see everybody out. And uh, I'm telling myself this also. So, <laughs> Also, uh, Richard's uh, wife is doing a presentation about Richard's uh, show on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock at the Jackson Young Gallery. Yeah, Cheryl's going to be talking about social justice and our, our fine arts initiative. Uh, she did a TED talk in 2013 and it will uh, have some relation to that. So she's a good speaker. So come on, come on out, join, join us. Okay, everyone. So until next virtual critique, which I have to look at the website to find out when it is. <laughs> but I think the next one is Errol Jacobson, I believe. Right, Robin? That's right. Yeah. Which will be a demo, um, a demo on the location and then um, a critique the following Wednesday.
Yeah, I think it's June 4th and 7th. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds right. So, uh, Laura, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Mary. much. Thanks I had someone to learn from. I had a good example. <laughs> okay, folks, that's the end of the show. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.